twin cam cylinder head, the cam sprockets are mounted on cones. So that, that means that the cam timing is fully adjustable. But it's also quite time consuming to get it uh, absolutely right. And I want it uh, within uh, plus minus half a degree. So um, I wanted to show you how uh, that is done. First you need something to read the degrees from. And uh, I have just uh, printed out a paper copy of, uh, from a CAD program. Uh, divided into 360 degrees on a piece of paper and then uh, laminated it uh, to, to make it a little bit more endurable and then I've uh, just uh, bolted it on uh, the side of the crankcase and uh, as an indicator I have a, a steel wire just squeezed uh, with the flywheel nut so not very fancy but uh, it does the job. First we need to find the top dead center and we have to be fairly accurate with that. So the markings with flywheel and crankcase is simply not enough. They can differ up to five degrees. I'm using um, a former spark plug that I have uh, drilled through and uh, put a, th a threaded pin straight through so I can uh, stop the piston with this end. Now I've uh, put the mechanical end stop in the spark plug's place and I've adjusted it so uh, I just barely doesn't reach top dead center. Now I turn the crankshaft from the other side here and uh, as you can see I can I cannot come any further here so this is the stop and it uh, reads like five and a half degrees from that line to this line like so and then I go over to the other side oh this is heavy And it stops at six, six and a half degrees. So let's see, 5.5 and 6.5 from either end. That makes a total of 12 degrees and half of it is right in the middle where the top dead center is. So if I now put, uh, take away the mechanical end stop and adjust it 6 degrees from either of this, that's, that's where my top dead center really is. So now I have uh, removed this mechanical end stop and uh, the reading from one direction was 6.5, about there. And uh, we agreed on that uh, half of the distance, 6 degrees, is where the real top dead center is. So if I turn it to about there, half a degree there, there's my uh, real end stop. And uh, just to, I just have to move it half a degree, like so little bit dodgy but uh, I think it's uh, okay and um, there we have it there is the accurate TDC now we can uh, start timing the cams the cam sprocket bolts are loose so I can turn the cam like this and I have uh, just a um, small mark here that tells me where where it roughly should be so I am uh, just adjusting both of them um, to fit very, very roughly in the region where they should be. And now I will tighten the cam sprockets and start measuring where I'm at. So now we uh, know where the TDC is, uh, so you can say the degree wheel is calibrated. 
Uh, I put the dial gauge on and it uh, reads off the valve lifter. I've uh, turned the crank so the intake uh, cam is at maximum lift position approximately, a little bit before. And uh, I do uh, the same procedure as finding TDZ, that uh, I go um, a little bit, uh, do a readout before it reaches maximum lift and after it had uh, reached uh, maximum lift. And then I know that in between these two degree readings I have the maximum uh, lift position, which is the load center value. And that is what I'm uh, adjusting the cams with. So. Uh, I turn the crank in the running, running direction, that is very important, not to uh, turn it the other way. And let's see, backing off like that. So I turn it until my gauge reaches zero, about there and I do a readout here. It says 102 degrees, and then I in turn it a little bit further. The lift increases, maxes out, and goes back again to zero. And this is only a couple of hundreds of millimeters, so I'm very careful with turning here. There I'm back again, and then it is. 111. <clears throat> so the difference between 102 and 111 is 9 degrees, so uh, and half of that is 4.5. So if I add 4.5 to my 102, I get 106.5. That's where uh, the lobe center value is at the moment. Uh, it's a tad too small. I want it to be somewhere between uh, 107 and 108. Uh, so I'll do another check, um, disassemble the cam, turn the sprocket just slightly, <laughs> very very tricky to do that, and I'll put it back again and uh, test. This is tedious. You don't have to watch it. Lucky for you.